Hey, David, we're so grateful that you are here uh, to talk to us. Yes. And um, so take it away. First of all, what, tell, talk, to, talk to us about uh, Flight Plan 252 and why is something like this important? Is this just yeah. like another program? Because we got programs. Is yeah, that what this yeah. is? Uh, yeah. Actually, when you were just speaking uh, on Luke 252, the idea that Jesus grew in, with favor with God and man and wisdom and, and stature uh, I was thinking that your kids, regardless that they're sitting in here or in our ministries, they're going to grow in all four of those areas regardless. The question is, is whether or not Jesus is a part of those. And uh, I can, I've learned as a parent that I want my kids to grow not only physically. Uh, I, I'd love for Eli to be a stud athlete, but he came after me, so he's not going nah. to be. Uh, I would love for him to, to grow emotionally, but I want him to grow socially. And so we created Flight Plan uh, 252, uh, not just me, but our family team, and we've worked on it for about a year. And really, I kind of guided the process probably with me in mind, honestly. I'm, you know, a simpleton. I, I grew up in Memphis and was educated in Memphis, and so I don't get things clearly all the time. And uh, I needed something very simple that would point me in the direction to say, okay, this is what it would look like if you were to raise your kids to follow Jesus every day. And so you'll see in there uh, a couple of things. You're going to realize that the church, in some ways, has kind of been out of balance. We've unintentionally made a shift in the church that we've said, if you bring your kids to us, we'll disciple them, we'll create little Jesus lookalikes, and then we'll send them back home to you. And parents, with all good intentions as well, have said, Great, I need a math tutor, I need a, I need a hitting coach, mm. I need someone. So now these pastors who are asking for my kids will say they'll develop my kids spiritually. And so if I just get them to church, then they'll take care of it. And we've unintentionally created a very unhealthy cycle in the church where we've said, hey, you help me grow my church, you bring your kids, I'll take care of the rest. And it's really damaged the family. And so what Flight Plan 252 is doing is it's trying to get the cycle reversed, that we're saying out of 168 hours a week, you're responsible for those and the church gets one hour. And so what can we do as a church to equip you as parents to say, you're going to maximize all of those 167 hours of your week to disciple your kids and to grow them. And so it's a systematic approach. You're going to see that in just a second. Uh, where you see age grades uh, really building upon another. And so we've had great children's ministries and we've had great youth ministries, but in some ways they've always kind of worked independently from one another. And now we, you can start seeing certain threads going all the way from preschool to what we'll call launch, which is sending them off into adulthood, into college. You see certain things that build upon each other as, they, as your kids get older. Awesome. Okay, so... Tell us how this is done. I mean, this is incredible, but um, how will we know, you know that, it's, that it's working? How's that happen? Yeah, so if uh, and later on you'll get a book uh, out in the lobby, but we're going to look at this thing uh, with, with adolescents. So it's on page six or seven, guys. I think it might be the second slide for you. Uh, but let's take a, a life stage of helping with adolescents, uh, which is really kind of our grades fifth and sixth, maybe going into seventh. And I picked this particular age grade because... It's full of change. Maybe more so outside of when they were like one and two and three years old, there's a lot going on right here uh, in the middle school years. And uh, maybe one of the most intimidating times for a parent. Uh, I, as a former junior high pastor, I used to have parents actually have this conversation to me that said, you know, when my kid started your junior high ministry, he was really sweet. Things were great. <laughs> what did you do to What'd him? What did you do? And, you know, in the nice godly answer is it's called puberty, right? Uh, things change. Uh, I was the most awkward junior high kid on the planet, and my wife can show you pictures of it, right? And so we, we want to take this particular one because we see that there are all kinds of, of things going on, and, and we want to address that. You're, you're going to see that there are really three categories uh, with this life stage. And the first one is what we call parent practices. And this is really what the church has kind of laid out and said, as a parent, this is what we would expect you to do in a very simple way, right? Uh, to try to accomplish in this life stage. And we, in this particular one, we've nailed uh, four 
extremely important talks that you must have with your kids uh, during this life stage in their puberty and becoming an adult. Uh, learning to help your teenager navigate those things. It's sexuality and the life of purity. Now, you might be thinking there, wait a minute, fifth or sixth grade, I probably already had that talk when they were in third grade or even in second grade, and that's true. This is one of those that we'll be building on. You'll actually be starting that when they're five or six years old. You'll also be talking about salvation and reinforcing their walk with Christ. So maybe they've said a prayer when they were in third grade and they understood the very basic understanding of salvation. You're coming back and reinforcing that when they're, they're a young teen. Or you're teaching them to learn a personal and meaningful devotion time with the Lord, that they're no longer coming to our children's services and, and, and singing songs and learning just a, a little Bible verse. They're learning how to open up Scripture on their own and really learning to dig in and find something on their own. So you have the, what we call the parent practices. That's your part. The cool thing is, is that the next one is what we call um, church partnership. And church partnership is saying, okay, we, we understand your lane and your role. We want to come alongside you and help you accomplish those things. And so one of the ways that we'll do that is we'll take sexuality in the life of purity. Uh, is that we would expect that probably around Valentine's Day would be a very good time to talk to, that, to your kids about that. And so every February, or maybe our middle school and our junior high ministries are actually taking three or four weeks in our connect groups on Sunday morning to reinforce that. So they would hear it at home, they would hear it here at church. And then we have something called celebration moments. And these are things that we want to create a, a milestone or something that would help you as a parent, that child remember the important decision that they made or, or some of those important talks that they made. And this is not foreign to us. If we were baptized as a child, we remember that day. That's a milestone moment. That's a celebration moment that you, you've done. The 12 service that our church has always done for years could be a very memorable moment for a sixth grader moving into his teen years. And so finally, to kind of cap it off as you've got this thing called flight training. It's in the bottom left-hand corner of these pages, and it's our seminar dates. So as a parent, you can go, great, David, you're telling me all this stuff. This is what I'm supposed to do. The great thing is, is that we'll set seminars up so that you can learn, you can come and learn how to have the sex talk with your kids, what to say. We're going to be setting up seminars on how to lead your kid to Christ because we don't want to do that for you anymore. We don't, we don't think that that's healthy for you to bring little Johnny to David and let me uh, lead him to Christ. We want to teach you to do that on your couch at home. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these things are, are, are here to help equip you and kind of get you set up so for David, success. So everybody that grabs one on the way out will yep. we'll capture this better. But what you just did was show us just one section, because I'm looking here, we've got the big plan laid out, and then each infant to, to three years old, birth and blessing, and it has each of those, the parent practices, church partnership, celebration moment. Each, each phase has this, um, ages four and five, and then it has also the flight training, which you just mentioned, those things the church is going to do. Many of those things are already in place. But how, how are we going to know in the end, um, our, the, the end game really is teaching our children how to follow Jesus every day. How do, right. we, how do you make it stick like on a daily basis. Yeah, this is one of the things that I'm really excited about. At the, at the very end of our book, you're going to see something called in-flight checks. And the idea here is really this is measurement. And for me, uh, that really speaks to me. If I'm working on a birdhouse, which I've never built, so I don't know why I came up with that one. If I'm working on a birdhouse, I want to see that the walls are straight and that the roof is actually on there. Uh, I want to see how well I'm doing. And so at the very end of our, our book here is that you, you've got diagnostic questions for each age group that you can kind of look and, and just ask yourself questions and, and be able to go, okay, is little Johnny, is he really understanding this? And these, we know that kids really develop at all uh, really different stages. And so some are slower, some are quicker, uh, some read faster and all of those different things. And so it's not concrete, but it will help give you some indicators of, okay, here's, a, here's something that I need to really reinforce or focus on. Uh, as a parent. It's, re it's really like, I'm looking at it, it's really like a, um, a parenting catechism. Yes. I mean, you know, which is, in other words, questions that you would hope your child knows or has, uh, can yeah. answer by that time. Really That's right. Awesome. Good stuff. Okay, what else you, what else you got? For yeah, us? so uh, if you were, if I were you, probably the next question would be, 
Okay, that's great. You're going to offer some seminars. I'll come once a month, but I have every day with this child. So what does it look like? Our focus is to help families follow Jesus every day. And probably the thing that I'm most excited about would be what we call our 252 life. You're going to see at the very beginning of this book, We've kind of capitalized on Luke 2.52. We understood that he grew with favor of God and man and wisdom and grew in wisdom and stature. So how do we help you do that? Well, we've taken that 2.52 and we've said this. The first, the first two is that we would expect you as parents to pray together twice a week alone without the kids. Lock them up, put them in the basement, <laughs> in the garage, put them to whatever it is, get, get, get them away. And you and your spouse spend twice a week together praying. And the reason why I put that first is because in order for you to be a healthy mom and dad, you've got to be a healthy spouse. This is actually the very reason why we created Marriage Corps here at this church, is that I believe healthy marriages create healthy parents. And so what happens is when you're praying with your spouse twice a week, more than just prayer happens. Conversation happens. Grace happens. Maybe there's things that have been misunderstood throughout the week that you can hash out uh, maybe laying in bed together or sitting on the couch by yourself that when the kids are running around, you could never do. And then you've got five. So you've got to pray twice together as a married couple, then pray as a family five times a week. And many of you are doing this already. So it's prayers at dinner time, or it's prayers at bedtime, or it's one of, one of the greatest ones you could do is pray with your kids as you're dropping them off for school. It's just a quick prayer of God bless him before he goes off to school. But make those prayers intentional. You know, don't make it, God is good, thank you for this food, amen, right? It's, it's, you know, Eli, tell me about your day. Or when we're going to bed at night, tell me what you're thankful for. And one of the great things that will happen is that their answers are always hilarious when they're young, right? And so it's just a good entertainment, really. So, uh, so pray as a family five times a week. A, a family that prays together will stick together. So pray as a spouse twice a week. Pray as a family five times a week. And the second two is what I'm really excited about, is teach your kids about Scripture twice a week. Now, if you're me, that sounds really intimidating, but I promise you it's not. Out of one, one time out of those two, we're just asking you to set aside an intentional time to, to talk about the Lord with your kids. I would suggest Sunday nights. Go sit on a back porch swing. Go get ice cream. Go to the park. But carve out time every week that you would say, this is our time to talk about the Lord. And one of the things that you need to get out of your head is don't put your kids down on the couch and go find that family Bible that's really huge and open it up and say, all right, I'm about to preach <laughs> from Hezekiah, right? You know, no, okay? It, it's really talking about what God has, has taught you throughout the week. Maybe teach them a principle. And so a very intentional time of worship. And I tell you, those with little kids, that's really difficult. When we've tried this at home, they always end up in timeout. One of them gets a spanking, <laughs> you know, and that's okay, right? Yes. We, we won't. Yes. You got to keep at it, all right? So the, talk, make an intentional time to talk about the Lord. The other time is what we'll call God moments, which is when, when my kids are in the back of the truck and we're going to school and, and they go, where's the sun come from? Or this person said this to me at school and it hurt my feelings. What should I do about that? Or... Maybe your child opens up about being bullied on social media. Or maybe they were the bully on social media. How do you address that? And if you're listening and if you're in tune, you can go, okay, this is the moment that God has allowed me to teach his principles to my kid when they're most open. It's usually not the time when you're sitting on the couch. It's when you're riding in the car or when you're fishing with your kids. It's good. So it's yeah. back to Deuteronomy 6.4, right? That's when you it. rise up, when you lie down, when you walk along the way, when you're in a car... I mean, they, they, it would have been written yeah. just like that if yeah. it were in our time, right? Yeah, and if, and if you're me, I, I always struggle with the, even the creativity of how to do that. So you think that you've got to get your kids down and start doing object lessons and crafts. Right. But one of the things that we wanted to do to equip you is starting today, uh, you're going to see in their bulletin on the very back page. You pick that up and look right there. Normally we've got notes. In the very bottom we've got Flight Plan 252 uh, questions. Every week after our sermons now, we're giving you questions so that when you go to lunch today after church or when you're at home tonight and you're struggling to figure out what to talk about, we, we want to equip you with questions that you can talk to your kids about and just at least start the conversation. 
All right. Hey, David, thank you so much for all the hard work. I know the team's worked so hard towards this. You'll get one of these on the way out, right? Yep. One per family, and we'll have them available along the way. Along with a bracelet. But uh, let's, let's thank David and the team for the great work. Thank you, David.